Part four of the Mastering Student Meals series. Welcome back, my friends. And if you are coming in fresh to this series, you're completely new, I would suggest clicking on this video over here. Everything you need to know about shopping, about equipment, all your basics to get you started. We also covered breakfast in this video and lunch right here. All this good stuff if you're new. And it's just me today. Brother Josh is out and about. He's an animal. He's traveling like a madman. He's actually about to go on a honeymoon for three weeks. But luckily, we've got two bros in this family. Yes, we are real brothers for all you guys that are new. And the show keeps on going on, even if he's out traveling. We'll see. Maybe he drops a few videos every now and then from his abroad travels. But we are moving on to dinner. And dinner is great, especially when you are in college, because hopefully you're a little settled at that point of the day. You've got a little more time to maybe get in the kitchen and do something a little more significant. But even if you don't, it doesn't matter because every recipe is just five ingredients and super simple. So we've got you covered. You can do this, I swear. And we are gonna start it off with one of my favorite things in the world because of where the Brothers Green came from. This is the Philly cheesesteak. And here are your ingredients right here. And the best part about a Philly cheesesteak is you can make it at home. Once I realized how easy it was to actually replicate some of those famous Philly cheesesteaks, everything changed. And not only replicate, but I would make the claim that if you make this thing and you follow these instructions, it is tastier than a lot of the Philly cheesesteaks out there. I've had them all, I've compared. This thing is fantastic. We are gonna start it off by rough chopping an onion. Any onion will work for this recipe, no problem. And then whip out that trusty foreman. We're bringing her back, we're bringing him back. It is George Foreman, it's a him. Prop it up just like that to get that stupid slant out of the game. Hit it with a little bit of oil and then just throw the onions on top, spread them out evenly, and just close the top for about two minutes. After about two minutes, I added a little bit of salt and that's just gonna help cook the onions a little faster, draw out some of that moisture. And about every few minutes, I would just open it, stir the onions around, get them nice and caramelized and just get them to that beautiful golden brown point right there. That is delicious caramelization happening. The onions are sweet. Then I took that roast beef and just ripped it up into tiny little pieces on the foreman grill. I closed that thing and then sear, sear, sear away. Opened it after about two minutes and it is nicely cooking in there. So I just start mixing it around just like you would see at a cheesesteak place. They're mixing it on the grill, they're chopping it up. Do whatever you gotta do to get it nice and mixed up. Once that beef starts to get nice and crispy, you want a little texture to it. I took it and just started mounding it up just like that. Then I took the onions and piled them on top of that mound. Whoa, my God, this thing's coming together. Then you got those slices of cheese and this is mimicking the whiz wit from Philadelphia. You got your whiz wit. That just means with that old cheese whiz. Get those slices right on there. Take your bread and just cut it down to the size you want and then cut it down the middle, open it nice and just boom, right over there. Flop it on top of that steak and this, I'm telling you, this is the actual technique they use take some sort of spatula to get under there and make sure all that meat is nice in there. You'll see, I can just slide it around. It's all sucked up into that bun. And here's the magical moment, Chinookski right there. It is flipped over and it is all incorporated. Maybe I missed a few pieces, but to me, that is just your glorious Philly cheesesteak. You cut into that thing. It is ooey, gooey, greasy, everything you could possibly want. Holy shit. I just impressed myself with this thing. This is insane. That is like a real Philly cheesesteak right there. Just the look of it, everything. And I was so damn excited by the looks of that thing that I completely disregarded the fifth ingredient, which is just an old squeeze and dip of the ketchup, the perfect pairing. Now you guys have seen us use the flatbread to make pizza many times on this channel. It's a Brother's Green specialty. It's so quick, it's simple. You got a fresh pizza in minutes. But this idea actually comes from a famous pizza shop in NYC called Artichoke. And they serve this spinach artichoke type pizza that I've tried many times to replicate and this is my best attempt at it. 
So we're gonna start off by just taking some fresh spinach and putting it in some sort of microwave safe bowl or mug. If you're using frozen spinach, you can skip this step. Add a little bit of water and just cover it and then microwave that for two minutes and you're gonna have nice and wilted spinach, just like this. Then we've got our can or jarred artichokes, take them out and then just give them a rough chop so they're nice and bite-sized and mix in that spinach and those are your main ingredients for this pizza. We're gonna take our flatbread, AKA our instantaneous pizza crust. We're gonna take a jar of Alfredo sauce, which is really just a creamy cheese sauce and that's what really brings this whole entire thing together that creamy goodness as your base spread that right on a nice even layer then just top on your ingredients just like that and of course hit it with a little bit of cheese I'm just using some fresh mozzarella but get weird with it I know Parmesan would be fantastic on this as well we're gonna throw that in on the bottom rack just like that and make sure it's right by the heat lamp because that is gonna get that bottom crust super crispy, just like a pizza oven. Let that bubble away and cook down for like three, four minutes. And then what I did is I took it out and I just slid it onto the top rack. My toaster oven actually had a broil setting and I got the cheese nice and crispy, that extra little broil. That comes out of the oven and right here, I cheated a little bit. I added some red chili flakes, but I just looked at the beauty of that thing. And I almost would have been mad at myself if I didn't sprinkle on some fresh spice. It just looked like it needed it. So that is a six, we'll call it a bonus ingredient. That is a bonus if you guys want the spice. Chop that up with your knife or your pizza cutter and enjoy. Is this a joke right here? Oh. First bite. This next recipe is the microwave gumbo and I love it because it happens all in one dish and all in the microwave. Very easy cleanup. You can do this one in your dorm room. Impress your friends. To start it off, we are going to chop up some peppers and onions into just nice little chunks and then take a sausage link and feel free to use bacon or whatever meat you want, even keep it vegetarian. But I like the sausage link because I can just cut it right out of the casing and just rip it up into small pieces is just like that. Then we are gonna take one cup of instant rice. And the instant rice is very important if you are using a microwave because it is gonna take days to cook regular rice in the microwave, but instant rice cooks instantly, it's great. To that one cup of instant rice, you are gonna use one cup of water. So that is a one to one ratio. And then we are gonna add that Cajun spice. Get it super spicy. It looks like I'm adding a lot of spice here, but that is most of the flavor. We're getting some flavor from the meat and the veggies, but most of it is coming from that spice mix. And I'm telling you, it craves it. My Cajun spice mix actually had salt in it, and a lot of them do. A lot of the spice mixes, they add the salt in there, but just check the ingredient list. And if it doesn't have salt, make sure you add in enough salt till it starts tasting decent. I put a lid on the Tupperware or use plastic wrap, but I just kept a little corner popped open for a steam vent. And I cooked it in the microwave for about four minutes. Then I took it out and I stirred it. Some of the sausage wasn't completely cooked through. And I put it back in the microwave for about two minutes. And then I took it out and just let it sit there and just steam in its own glory. For those of you dedicated fans out there, you know that we freaking love ramen noodles on this channel. We've taught you how to make it from scratch. We've taught you how to spice it up in a million different ways. And this next recipe kind of falls somewhere in between. So we're taking that standard ramen noodle package that everyone knows and we are going to add a bunch of fun things to that so it actually gives you a feel like you're eating a true ramen noodles in a ramen noodle shop. The first thing you're gonna do is whip out those scallywags and slice them nice and thin and throw them into some ice water. It's pretty amazing that it's taken this long in this series to use scallions on the Brothers Green. Let's whip out that college hot pot again, get some water in there and turn it up to a boil. And then once it hits a boil, just turn it down just a little bit so you get more of a gentle boil. We're gonna put in an egg and we're gonna cook it for exactly five minutes. And when that is done cooking for five minutes, 
we are gonna ice shock that in our scallion water right there. It's already nice and cold for an egg, so just throw that in there. You can just discard all of that water and start off with two cups of fresh water, and we are gonna add the spice mix to that. That's what the ramen package says. Two cups will make the perfect ramen noodles. Once that hits a boil and that spice packet's nice and incorporated, then we're gonna go in with our ramen noodles and just cook that for two minutes. That's all, keep those noodles nice and chewy. That is the ramen noodle experience. While those are cooking, we are going to peel that egg. And this is probably the hardest part of the recipe is peeling a half boiled egg. You gotta be very careful and just take your time with it or you will screw it up. I've screwed up probably 50 to 60% of every half boiled egg I've ever made. And now let's plate this thing up. This is where things get really exciting. We are gonna dump the noodles into the bowl just like that. Add some canned corn, and corn is one of my favorite ingredients in ramen noodles. Then hit it with those scallions, and since they've been soaking in that ice water, they're gonna be nice and crispy, and the flavor is gonna be more delicate. Then I took some of this spicy relish right here, a little pepper relish. You don't have to use that, but it will add very good flavor and that extra spice you're looking for. Then slice that runny egg in half, perfectly cooked right there and add that to the mix and there you go you've got gourmet ramen noodles from one of those shitty little ramen noodle packages moving on to the final recipe of the dinner section and of course we got to hit you with the most quintessential college food there is good old easy mac and it is called easy mac for a reason because it is so easy you cook it in a microwave so here are our ingredients we are going to do the same thing with that sausage link again just cut that open and rip it up into little pieces then just add some chopped onion to that throw that in the microwave for about five minutes so the whole point here is the sausage is going to cook out its fat in the microwave and then it's going to caramelize the onions in that fat so once you cook it for about five minutes you take it out of the microwave just give it a little mix and throw it in there for a few more minutes, maybe like three more minutes until it is nice and brown. It will shrink substantially. Hopefully it will come out nice and crispy and caramelized. Now just follow the instructions on your Easy Mac. Just fill it up to that good old line. Cook that off in the microwave until those noodles are nice and ripe. Let's get back to that sausage mixture. And you see all that delicious fat down there? We want to reserve that. So just remove all your ingredients, but leave that fat. And we are going to mix in the breadcrumbs, which will add a lot of flavor to the breadcrumbs, but most importantly, will help with the browning in the oven so they don't just burn and go dry. Now we're gonna bring everything together. So take your cooked noodles, add your powdered cheese packet, and that powdered cheese packet is definitely lackluster. So we're also gonna add some shredded cheese cheese to the mix. Take some sort of mug or bowl, anything that can handle the heat of a toaster oven and dump your mac and cheese in there and just sprinkle on those breadcrumbs. Throw that in the toaster oven at 350 degrees for about five to seven minutes just until those breadcrumbs are nice and golden brown and take that out and enjoy that crispy topping with that ooey gooey mac and cheese. Wow. 